Marshall. The eternal optimist is often ridiculed for his hopeful vision, his lofty ideals, and his unrealistic advice. Consider the optimistic cliché, it's never too late, or better late than never. Is that always the case? Or do some occasions exist where we might fare better with a more negative piece of advice? Leave well enough alone, for example. We could find that money. Thousands of dollars. You could even have half. Adolf, bribery is a crime. Oh, give me the letter. I am the one she trusted. I had to get away with now it. Put down those scissors. Drop them. Adolf, if I hear from you one more time, it won't be the post office you're dealing with. It'll be the police. mystery drama, Postage Due, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Douglas Dempsey and stars Ralph Bell. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Consider for a moment the postman's creed. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night stays these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. Bad weather is one thing, but sometimes even bigger obstacles can lie on the path of our friendly mailman. How far does his duty extend? To the point of personal hazard? To the point of actual danger? Examine the case of Mr. George McCready, mailman, whose route is the south side in the town of Smallville. Say, George, I got a surprise for you in today's load. A surprise from the postmaster? <laughs> You're notifying me of a raise in salary, huh? <laughs> no. Something for you to deliver. A letter postmarked August 1st, 1941. Come on. Oh, no, really? I'm serious. They finally tore out the old wooden mail chute and they found this letter stuck in it. Since 1941? Oh, boy, that must be some kind of record. Yeah, thought you'd get a kick out of it being on your route and all. Here it is. It's got a three cent stamp on it. Three cents? Those were the days. Yeah. So, what's the address? Uh, 507 South Market Street. 507? No one's lived in that place for years. Hey, wait a minute. Not that house all the kids say is haunted. Yeah, that's the one. I don't even deliver the junk mail there anymore. It's all overgrown. Well, look, if you want, I'll turn it over to the dead letter office. Oh, no way. After all this build up, you think I'm not going to try and deliver it? You know the slogan? Neither snow nor rain nor gloom of night. <laughs> it's my duty. To Mr. Leon Winters from P.J. Moriarty. Oh, at least there's a return address. Maybe I'll uncover something. <laughs> just, just as long as you don't uncover anything haunted. Listen, the only frightening thing about this job is the backache I go home with every night. 507 South Market. Well, what do you know? A car in the driveway. Must be someone here after all. Uh, I should have left my bag at the curb. It's a regular nature hike here. <laughs> Hello? Anybody in there? Mailman. Hi. Somebody upstairs. It's the uh, mailman. Hey. Who's in there? I've got a letter. I'm uh, here, out front. Yes? Huh? Oh. You uh, live here? No, I'm the owner. Just trying to stay ahead of the vandalism. Come in. Well, this place looks pretty good inside. I figured I'd find a real mess. Why don't you rent this place out? Nobody wants... Uh, no one would want to live here. It's not really fit. So what brings you here? I've got a letter to deliver. I haven't used this address in years. Must be some old-timer trying to reach me. Oh, real old-timer. It's postmarked 1941. We found it stuck in an old mail chute down at the post office. 1941? The whole family was here back then. Who's it to? It's addressed to Mr. Leon Winters. Leon? You know him? Yes. 
Yes, of course. He's... <coughs> well, he's me. I just haven't gone by that name in such a long time. Well, uh, I'll bet this brings back some memories. You couldn't have been uh, much more than uh, 20 when it was written. I was 17 in 1941. Who could it be from? Mr. Winters, before I turn it over to you as a kind of formality, I'd uh, like to see some identification. A driver's license or something. Uh, I uh, I don't have my wallet with me. I'd hate to give this to the wrong person after 40 years and all. Listen, I... Uh, I'm not really Leon. Uh, Leon was my older brother, but he's dead now. I'm Elroy Winters, and I am executor of the family estate, so... Well, that uh, does complicate things a bit. If I have an identification for Elroy Winters, uh, right here... No, it's, it's not that, Mr. Winters. If this other Mr. Winters, uh, Leon, that is, has passed away, then I should try to return this letter to its sender. And who's that? A, uh, P.J. Moriarty. P.J. All right. And yeah, that must be Pamela... Well, you won't have any luck finding her, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, McCready, George McCready. Miss McCready, she had some uh, connection with Leon years ago, but she uh, dropped out of sight. We, uh, he never heard from her again. Well, nonetheless, I think I'd better try to return the dress and see what I find. That would be Cliff Manor, one of those mansions over on Society Hill. Oh, well, that's right, fifteen forty Society Hill. I think you'll be wasting your time. That family moved away long ago. Listen, Mr. McCready, uh, this letter may have something to do with my brother's estate. A lot of financial matters were never cleared up. I can understand your anxiety, sir, but uh, postal regulations dictate my course. Here, this is my boss's number. Call if you can give me any leads, and I'll get back to you if I reach a dead end. Fair enough? A bit overzealous, aren't you, McCready? Your regulations... Should hardly apply to a letter that's 40 years late. May I help you? Uh, yes, I've got a letter here that I'm returning to sender, a uh, P.J. Moriarty. Oh, goodness, no. The Moriartys haven't lived here for ages. They were the original owners. I must uh, try to locate a Pamela. Yes, yes. Well, you might try Adolf, the old groundskeeper. Uh, he stays out back in the cottage beyond the kennels. Thank you. Good day, sir. Uh, excuse me. Uh, you wouldn't be Adolf, would you? I wouldn't be if I had a choice. But yes, I am Adolf. Head me down off this ladder. Okay. You're really too old for this. Oh, and you're, <laughs> you're lucky to be doing something useful. <laughs> I'm not useful. I've been put out to pasture. I take care of these hedges only because I want to. Well, you do a nice job. I came here to ask about the Moriarty's. Did you know them? Did I know them? <laughs> they hired me. Back then, I ran the whole place, not this puny little flower patch. <laughs> They sold the place in 46, and I stayed on. Been through five owners now. <laughs> I come with the house. Do you know any way I can reach them? Oh, it's not likely, young fella. They all split up, had big money problems after the war ended. Not too little money, mind you. Too much of it. <laughs> They all went their separate ways, and that was that. What about uh, Pamela J. Moriarty? Pamela? Little Pamela? <laughs> she was an angel. I was always set on her. But, of course, nothing ever happened. <laughs> Say, what are you after coming here and coaxing an old man out of his memory? You some kind of a cop? No, no. I'm just a mailman trying to deliver a letter. Well, the box is around front. Well, you don't understand. It's an old letter from Pamela to a Mr. Leon Winters. From Pamela? Mr. No one has heard from Pamela in 40 years. She's dead that long. Well, that's that. She's dead. He's dead. End of the line. Well, this uh, Leon, he is dead, is he? Or so his brother says. Why, uh, you know him? Uh, uh, no, I, I don't recall. 
Listen, mister, you cannot return this letter to Pamela and you say this Mr. Lane is dead. So maybe you you ought to leave the letter here with me. Oh? Why is that? Well, I, I do hear from the family now and again. Well, if a Moriarty comes calling, you should put them in touch with me. But I don't know when I would hear from them. They check up on me. I can't reach them. I'm sorry, Adolf, but I'm going to hold on to this envelope for now. Here's my number. If you hear from the family, I'd like to meet them. All right? I don't think you want to meet the Moriarty's, mister. They can be a cruel bunch. And if that letter is something important, something they want, they'd get it. Just tell them to call me. That you, George? Oh, hello, dear. Don't even ask, Martha. The answer is yes. Your TV magazine has arrived. (laughs) Here it is. Oh, good. You know, it's an unfair life being the mailman's wife. How so? Well, I'm the first to see my husband leave in the morning and the last to get my mail in the evening. (laughs) (laughs) You think you've got problems? I got a piece of mail here so overdue you can't imagine. Oh, are you in trouble? Oh, no, no, it's not my fault. We found an old letter in the sorting room chute dated 1941. How exciting! Who's it for? Did you deliver it? I'll tell you the whole story. Just let me sit down first. hmm? Is it a personal letter or business? (laughs) Ha, ha. Funny you should ask. That seems to be the big question. Everyone seems to think it's going to solve their financial matters. Here, take a look for yourself. Oh, my. August 1st, 1941. Well, it's in a woman's hand. Just look at those flourishes. Oh, I'll bet my button box it's personal. Did you find this, Leon Winters? I didn't find anybody. Apparently, addressee and sender are both dead. I went to the address, uh, 507 South Market, that uh, old house, you know. Oh, yes. Lots of stories about that place. Our kids all swore the place was haunted. Well, it's not haunted now. Just not rented. I met the owner. Weird duck. First he tells me he's Leon. Then he tells me he's Elroy, Leon's younger brother. And that Leon is dead. He's trying to hide something? Oh, I don't think so. It was just after the letter. And then I got the same song and dance from her side. Her? Yes, uh, Pamela. She's uh, the P.J. Moriarty. Pamela? Was she... Were they lovers? Oh, maybe, but, but let me finish you. The best I can figure, this guy, Leon, was using this rich girl, Pamela, to get money. Then he finally left town, and she died. <laughs> It's really too confusing. I'm afraid I'll just have to turn the letter in, it's all. Oh, no. I mean, let's look at it first. What? Open mail? I'd lose my job, no matter what the letter said. Well, you can't just give it up. Oh, I shouldn't even have it now. It just seemed like, uh, like a challenge to try. But I've done all I can for today. Let's eat dinner. Ah, it's 9.30. Time for sleep. So, what about the letter, dear? All right, all right. I'll see what I can find out tomorrow. Enough is enough. Let's get some sleep. Okay, Martha? All right, George. Good night. Oh, my goodness, who on earth could that be? Uh, hello. Give the letter to its rightful owner, George. No harm will come to you. But deliver it soon. Oh. oh. George, who was it? What's wrong? George? Is this nocturnal phone call the Moriarty threat? Or is it Elroy trying to claim his brother's long-lost paperwork? Perhaps there's someone else who wants the letter. And perhaps George's sense of duty is a bit extreme, just as Elroy warned. We shall expand on all of this in Act Two. Postman George McCready has committed the working man's cardinal sin. He has taken his work home with him. 
In this case, it's a letter overdue by 38 years. He won't rest until it's delivered. But should he continue to endure threats, insinuations, even midnight phone calls? For once, perhaps, George may be taking his job too seriously. And that can be dangerous. We join him now as he pays a second visit to the old Moriarty mansion. Come in. Hello, enough. It's the mailman, George McCready. Watch it. Don't step on those clippings. I'm sorting through my old scrapbooks. Well, it looks like the National Archives in here. So, you've decided to give me that letter after all? No, quite the opposite. I came to warn you. Lay off the threats and phone calls. What do you mean? I got a midnight phone call demanding the letter. Who was it? One of those tough Moriarty's you threatened me with? Oh, believe me, I have contacted no one. Now, listen, Adolf. I was trying to do my job yesterday. Today I'm here on my own to tell you that I intend to turn the letter in. Oh, no, please, don't do that. If you give it to the authorities, you will be passing up a big opportunity. I'm convinced that it is the key to a large sum of money. And if we can recover it, well, there might be a nice reward. That would be bribery. You forget, sir, you're dealing with the United States mail. Well, maybe, maybe if I told you the whole story... Why should I take your word? You're obviously hiding something. Well, what about these newspapers? Isn't their word good enough? Look, here, in my scrapbooks, all these clippings about the Moriarty's. This book holds 30 years of family history. And family scandals, no doubt. Don't judge them so harshly. They didn't ask for fame. Especially little Pamela. She, she hated the family's reputation. Here she is, age 16. Her first debutante ball. Hmm. She is striking. More than striking, she was different, intelligent. So, uh, what happened? <laughs> this is her engagement photo, 1941. She was set up to marry this banker. That's, that's when she met Leon, who is, as you know, the name on that letter. So you did know Leon Winters, huh? Yeah, sure. A nice boy. Only... He couldn't show his face around here. He came from the south side. I know the south side. That's my route. Ah, uh, then you know the problem. The wrong side of the tracks, as they say. But Pamela loved him all right. And since I was... Uh, I was fond of her, I had to meet... Her. Like uh, Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> so, what happened? They ran away, right? Ah, uh, not too fast. Leon would have liked that, but not Pamela. If she were to run away with a poor boy, the family would have disowned her, cut her off without a dime. Aha. Uh -huh. Enter the villain. Money. Well, there was a trust fund in her name, and she wasn't about to let the family get hold of that. So Leon had to wait around until she was old enough to get the trust fund. Hmm? And that's where things began to fall apart. You remember, this was 1941. It was fairly certain that America would soon be at war. And uh, Leon would be drafted. Right. So he, he was impatient. He wanted Pamela to forget her fortune and marry him. But she just couldn't leave all that money behind. You mean she said no to him? She hesitated. But that was enough. The next thing she knew, Leon had joined the Marines. Oh, that's too bad, but uh, you still uh, haven't explained why some old love letter could be so important. Now, be patient. Once Leon went off to war, that's when the scandal, as you call it, began. The shock of his being gone, really gone, brought Pamela to her senses. And so she ran off to join him with the money. With what money? Her trust fund. She met secretly with the family lawyers and convinced them to give her the cash. It was an enormous amount. Hundreds of thousands. She talked the lawyers into giving... Tricked them into it. She was a smart girl. And she packed up, bought a passage to Hawaii and took off. She probably meant to meet Leon there. Hmm. Incredible. She took the money and ran. And then what? Then... That is the end. How do you mean? Her ship went down in the Pacific. They never found her or the money. Oh, that's terrible. 
Poor Leon. Oh, I doubt he ever knew. He died, too, in the war. So, uh, that was that. Huh? Except for the money. She left with only one small suitcase, so everyone figured she must have hidden the cash somewhere before she left. And you uh, figure this letter is the uh, the uh, treasure map telling uh, Leon where the stash is hidden. Huh? See, it must be. No other letter was ever found. No clues. This must be it. Well, no wonder Elroy Winters smelled money when I showed him the letter. He's got to be thinking the same thing. And, uh... He is Leon's next of kin. But you won't find Pamela's next of kin. They're all gone. So I'm next in line. She she would have wanted it that way. I was her favorite. I was... It's not up to us. Sure it is. We could find that money. Thousands of dollars. You could even have had... Adolf, bribery is a crime. Give me the letter. I'm the one she trusted. I had to get away with... No, no, no. Put down those scissors. Come, come and drop them. <laughs> Now, Adolf, look. If I hear from you one more time, it won't be the post office you're dealing with. It'll be the police. Hey, you're running late, George. I was just sorting today's mail for you. Oh, thanks. I had an errand to run. I'd better hit the streets right away. No, no, hold, hold, hold on a minute. I, um, I wanted to talk to you about that old letter from yesterday... Well, why not? That's all I've heard about lately. <laughs> yeah, you can give it to the dead letter office. Oh, trouble? No, no, no real trouble. Tracking down the parties involved has just proved <laughs> impossible. Yeah, well, uh, one of those parties actually called up the post office. Who? When? Yesterday afternoon. A fellow named Elroy Winters. Oh, yeah. The brother of the addressee. He was pretty upset that I wouldn't give him the letter. Well, it's no problem. I told him it was normal for you to try and return it to the sender. What's the, uh, what's the big deal with this letter, anyway? Someone hid some money back then. A lot of money, evidently. And now everyone figures this letter has the key. Oh, boy. I started out thinking this would be fun to show up with a letter 40 years later. I figured I'd be a hero, but now... Ah, stop worrying, George. It's not that important. I called a main branch in Johnstown this morning, and they said we can give it to the next of kin. And that makes it this uh, Elroy character, right? Right. Well, I'm glad that's solved. You want me to hold it until he calls again? No. Uh, give it back to me. I'll take it on my route. If he's at the house, I'll hand it over and be done with this mess once and for all. Five oh seven South Market Street. Here we go again. Hey, uh, Elroy. Wait. It's me, George McCready. Uh, hold it. <laughs> hold it a minute. I, I need to talk to you. Uh, Mr. Winters, uh, you're as white as a sheet. You all right? Say, maybe we should go in the house and talk. No. We'll talk out here. You may get in the car. You don't look well. What happened? I've just spoken to Leon. What? When? Just now. In the house. In person. Oh, you're not suggesting you saw a ghost in that house? Call it a ghost, a vision, a dream, whatever. I just spoke to my brother. Well, maybe there's some kids in there. Who... I'll, I'll go take a look. It was Leon. I saw him. He wasn't a day over 20 years old. Elroy, if this melodrama is an attempt to scare me into giving you the letter, don't bother I came here to give it to you anyway. I don't want it. You don't want it? But it's yours. Pamela's dead and you're Leon's next of kin. You're supposed to have it. It's Leon's. Give it to him. Uh, look, Elroy, this is really crazy. Yesterday you wanted this letter so badly you were ready to call a lawyer. Here, will you take the letter? I won't bother you anymore. Thank you, but no. There's nothing in that letter for me, I know. Well, then... I'll leave it in the mailbox. You, uh, whoever wants it can pick it up whenever you... No, you mustn't. You've got to deliver it to Leon himself. Okay, Elroy, as you wish. The letter goes back to the post office. Martha, I'm home. Hello, dear. So, did you solve the big mystery? Not entirely. 
But it no longer matters. I'm turning the letter into the dead letter office tomorrow, and that'll be the end of it. Mm, maybe it's just as well. The whole thing sounded a little suspect to me. But just for fun, tell me what you found out today. And the whole story is one big misconnection. In a nutshell, uh, rich girl Pamela meets poor boy Leon. They fall in love. Leon wants her to elope with him, leave her family and fortune, but she wants to wait until she inherits her trust fund. How foolish. Leon goes off to war. Pamela decides to take off after Leon. Only her ship sinks and she dies. Then Leon is killed in the war. Can you believe that? Oh, what a terrible tragedy. Oh, George... I'm dying to know what's in that letter. You and everyone else, except Elroy. He sure changed his tune. Thinks he saw his brother's ghost. Wants nothing to do with the letter. Maybe he's scared. Mommy sure looked it. But, uh, what makes you say that? Well, I heard some more haunted house stories. Recent stories. One of the girls from the church circle lives near there. Oh, no. Here we go with the ghosts and the monsters. It is a strange house, dear. Nobody ever moves in. And every so often you hear tales. Lights on and off, old radio music. It's just kids. Elroy said so himself. Let's forget it. Go to bed. And uh, take the phone off the hook. Off the hook? Why? Is there something you haven't told me? I just don't want any cloak and dagger business tonight. If someone needs to speak to me, they can visit me in my dreams. Good night. <laughs> wonder George wants the phone off the hook. Elroy's sudden change of heart? Martha's haunted house reports? Is this mystery closing in on our postman? Will he make it till morning and be rid of this curse once and for all? We'll find out how it all ends in Act Three. Hollywood film critic once reviewed a particular comedy with this one-line synopsis. Man returns from the beyond to straighten out his financial affairs. If the plot sounds a little implausible, recall the words of our eternal optimist. It's better late than never. One thing is certain. Both that story and ours raise the same question. Do spirits really lurk about on Earth, finishing up their unfinished business? It seems that George and Martha are about to learn the answer to this and other questions. Uh, I can't sleep. Mm, Me neither. George, can't we read the letter? No way. I can't do that. But I can. I won't lose my job. No. I'll, I'll steam it open. Take a quick peek and seal it right up. No one will ever know. I can't let you do that. Oh, fiddlesticks. How about this? The the letter is right over there on the bureau. Now, suppose while you're asleep, I go over, pick it up, and just look at it from the outside. Now, is that a crime? Uh, That's okay with me, although I can't imagine what good it would do you. Uh, Good. Oh... My. Well, she really loved him. You can see it in the handwriting. You should be a palm reader. This woman's stationary. Practically transparent. All you have to do is hold it up to the light. I'm surprised you haven't done this already. Now, let's see if I hold it up at just the right angle. I can almost... Can you... See any kind of a map in it? Uh, a diagram, maybe? No, they're just words. Dearest Leon... Uh, Martha, I'm not listening. Dearest Leon, I hope this letter... Oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, George, you've got to read this. What's wrong? Well, nothing's wrong. It's just that... Well, do you want me to tell you or not? No, never mind. I, 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 I think you better put it back in my pouch. What's that? I thought you took the phone off the hook. I did. Maybe it's the phone company. 
Don't answer it. George, you should. It might have something to do with... You know. Uh, hello. Hello, George. This is Leon. Leon Winters. Don't you think it's time you delivered my letter? Bring it to my house. 507 South Market Street. Tonight. I'll be here all evening. No harm will come to you, George. George? Who was that? It was Leon, wasn't it? It can't be. I I don't believe in that stuff. But who else could call you with the phone off the hook? It's some sort of trick. Elroy's scare tactics. What did he say? He... he they, they said to deliver the letter to... Tonight, uh, to the house. Let's do it, George. We should. I can feel it. Well, I can't. I still think it's some kind of trap. What What makes you so anxious to send me over there? Because I know it's all right now. Why? I can tell from the letter, from reading it. D- d- trust my intuition. Oh, I don't want to drive over there at this hour. I, I can go in the morning. Yeah, when it's light, huh? You're scared. I am not. Well, come on. Now, let's get dressed. I'll drive you right now. We'll drop it off and be done with it. Well, okay. Okay, I'll go. But not because of that call. Because I trust your instincts. What are you doing? I'm turning the engine off while I wait for you. Oh. Well, I'll just be a second. I'll drop the envelope on the box and come right back. There are lights on in the house. Now go up to the door, George, and knock. Maybe I should take a look. Might be some kids in there or vandals. Good idea. I'll be right back. George, why you scared me? Why were you running? There's, there's a guy inside. A young fella, early 20s, uh, sitting in, in an old chair. There, there, there's a lamp and a table and a fire in the fireplace. It's him. But yesterday, that place wasn't furnished. What does he look like? Uh, it's dark hair, wavy, uh, a thin mustache, and, and he's wearing old clothes. Rags? No, 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 no. Some kind of a uniform. It, jungle fatigues, like an old war movie. And he didn't see you? Well, of course not. Well, so go back. Knock on the door, George. Oh, this is silly. It's not, dear. He's waiting for you. I know it. Oh, I'll be back in a minute. Well, here it goes. Don't bother to <laughs> knock, George. Let yourself in. Come over here. By the fire. Uh, hello, uh, I'm here because... I know all that. Who are you? Did Elroy put you up to this elaborate setup, the, 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 the ghost business and all? I prefer the word spirit to ghost, Mr. McCready. Here's my identification. Motor vehicle operator's permit issued to Mr. Leon Winters, August 1940... Where'd you get this? A little out of date, isn't it? But I really have no need to drive anymore now, do I? I don't believe this. You mean you don't believe in me? Isn't that it? You're convinced that a soul can't be trapped here on Earth. Restless. Waiting for something. But then, why did you come, George? I came only because my wife talked me into it. Because I trust her instincts. Uh, look, let's let's get this over with. Uh, here's your letter. At long last. Dearest Leon. Ah, uh, finally. You'll excuse me, George. I'm savoring this moment. I hope it was worth the wait. Oh. Very much so. It couldn't be better. You see, George, I had to wait for Pamela's answer. And now that I know what it is, 
I can finally rest in peace. I, uh... I guess I'll go now. My uh, wife's waiting for me in the car. No, 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 wait. Please, please stay. I've only got a few minutes left. I can feel myself fading already. I'll soon be no more than a memory. Is, is there anything I should do? Or... Just stay for a minute. It's been a lonely 40 years. Even Elroy was shy about seeing me. Well, he comes by and checks up on this place pretty regular, no? That he does. But he hasn't kept the house up all these years just out of sentiment. He's afraid to tear it down. For fear I'll move into his place. You seem to know what everyone's thinking. Not everyone. Just those near and dear to me. For example, I knew Pamela's letter was stuck in the mail chute ever since the day it happened. Oh, why didn't you read it back then? Because a spirit can see a lot of things, but he really can't do much about it. It's sort of like you can't just take your final reward. It has to be given to you. Now, well, wait a second. I, I don't understand. If you knew about the letter the day it was mailed, they, then you were already... Dead. That's right. So you must have known that Pamela was coming to meet you. Of course. I watched her ship set sail for Hawaii, and I watched it sink to the bottom of the Pacific. Oh, but couldn't, couldn't you join her then after she died? Her spirit didn't linger. She passed on to the next life. She had already made her peace in the letter. And... And she left you behind. Well, I had deserted her in life. I ran away and got myself killed. I robbed her of her dream of our meeting. So I was doomed to wait until now. It's all kind of hard to explain, but... It's really very fair. Oh, that's a comfort. But uh, w w what about Elroy and Adolf and the, the money? Don't worry about Elroy. He's always resented Pamela. He wanted her money as some sort of revenge. And as for Adolf, he was jealous. Remember that he was my age when Pamela ran away. In a way, he lost her to me. So the money seemed like compensation, I suppose. But they, they never found any money. There is no money. What? Pamela tricked us? In a way, yes. But you'll understand everything once you've read the letter. Oh, I'm fading away now. Thank you for... Oh, wait, 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 where are you going to... Don't, don't, don't you want to take your letter? You keep it. I'm leaving the physical world. Goodbye. Leon? Leon? Where are you? Where? Leon, can you hear me? Have a wonderful life, George. If you need me, you know my forwarding address. So long, Leon. Well, you were in there forever. What on earth happened? Here. This is for you. The letter? Well, it's open. Didn't you give it to him? Of course I did. And after he read it, he gave it back. He doesn't need it anymore. You mean because he's a ghost? A spirit, dear. But what does it say? I don't know yet. I saved it for you. Go ahead, read it. Oh, George, I'm so excited. Dearest Leon, I hope this letter finds you well. I love you. The biggest mistake of my life was letting you go. I only wish I had realized that sooner. <laughs> Smart girl. Now keep going, keep going. But I had to say no to you. Running off to get married would have pleased my family too much. They'd be rid of me and claim my trust fund in the bargain. 
That's just what they wanted. That's what everybody wanted, the trust fund. But now I'm free at last. I've turned my inheritance over to various charities anonymously. So, Leon wasn't kidding. There is no money. Now, now, this is the part I read through the envelope. And now my answer is, yes, I'm on my way to Honolulu. I'll wait there until you can join me. I love you, Leon. I'll wait forever. Yours, Pamela. Well, like I said, your intuition is never wrong. And now, they're together. Thanks to you, Martha. Thanks to us, George. You did deliver the letter. Well, you know the saying. Nothing can stay me from my appointed <laughs> rounds. <laughs> <laughs> With George's sense of duty and Martha's sense of destiny, the letter is finally delivered. We must always be ready to obey our instincts, to follow the irresistible pull of life. And when we do, we may find ourselves doing things we hadn't thought possible. An example when I return shortly. Some say that reality is all in the mind. This point of view can present some unanswerable questions. Did George actually deliver the letter to a spirit? Examine the facts. An off-duty mailman enters an abandoned house late at night. He clutches a 40-year-old piece of mail in his hand, torn open in a moment of emotional stress. Did he tear the envelope himself? Did he imagine the entire drama? To George, it was real. Beyond that, we can never know. Our cast included Ralph Bell, Terry Keene, Bob Caliban, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. International wants to come in here. And we will. We would rather come in with your blessing. It can't be done. But if we have to, we'll come in without it. Now, you can make it tough. You can delay us for months, even years. But sooner or later, that building will go up. I really shouldn't waste any more of your time, Mr. Hastings. Uh, Mr. Simmons, let me ask you a question. How much? How much? Well, usually it all comes down to how much. How much do you want? Are you trying to bribe me? Well, of course. How dare you insult me? I must ask you to leave. Uh, no, no, I was merely doing my job, and therefore it was necessary for me to touch all the bases. A good day, sir. This is E.G. Marshall, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams.